Well, welcome back. We are very close to wrapping this project up. So I did the weathered paint last time, and I went ahead and uh, finished off the racks and the bumpers and whatnot, and did them uh, with the same salt weathering technique. And I'm going to light rack up on top, and I went ahead and threw the stickers on around the windows and stuff. But other than that, I still have to finish up the weathering. So as you can see, I've got different wheels and tires on there. Now, these aren't the ones I actually initially meant to use on this build, but I was waiting so long for the other ones that were lost in the mail to arrive. I went ahead and ordered these, and I think I like them more than the ones I was going to use. And they are pretty daggone close to being almost identical to the same sizes of the stock wheels. But I should have paid more attention when I was ordering. It's okay for this build, but it's not what I would normally like. This doesn't have a 12 millimeter hex in the back. It just has the key slot for the axle peg, which is something you'd use on like your TF2s and stuff. But fortunately it worked out good for this build. I put them on and there's plenty of clearance. There's no real problems, uh, no risk of anything really rubbing. They actually look pretty decent on there. But we're gonna go ahead and roll with them for now. I might add a little bit of weathering to them. The only thing I don't really care for is uh, that little section I showed you. And I don't know why they left their lugs so daggone high. They should have used a little bit shorter screw there. I'm running low on M2s. I've done so many projects lately. I'm going to have to order another bulk set of them. When I get those, I'll put some shorter ones in to replace them. But not a bad tire. They actually got a nice little bit of stick to them and... They've got some weight to them, too, especially compared to the plastic old ones. Uh, let's just get started on this weathering. We are so close. I want to get this thing out and drive it. It is time to get to the shading and weathering and the rest of the stuff we need to do to finish off this body. And one of the things I have been using lately is this AK Smoke Pencil. See if I can zoom in on that for you real quick. And with that, I've been able to start doing my body lines a lot easier. And since it's a, a pencil on like a marker, if you make a mistake, you can actually get it off there with a little bit of effort. But the stuff sticks pretty good. And I'm going to need to start doing my panel lines. And they actually... It's such a, a light shading that it really depends on how hard you press to, is how much of an effect you get. So it's pretty nice for doing this because you don't have to worry about mistakes nearly as much. You just can just kind of lightly press and keep going back over your work. And I'm sure you can see from there the, the panel lines starting to form. And... I'm going to go over the entire truck and do all the panel lines, of course. Well, it just makes it so convenient. And you can also start doing some of your other shading with it too. So if you're really light through here, you want to just kind of add like some little bit of like greasy streaks coming down a little bit. Or shade up underneath these louvers here. There's even some little body panels over here that come out and come around. You can add a little bit of shading up under different door pieces. And you can see this starts coming along. Uh, I'm going to get a ruler out for this line because it's such a light panel line in there. It doesn't show up really nice and neat. So I'll get out a ruler and lay a ruler against that to do that section. But now that I've showed you that, I'll, I'll move on. I'm going to do the rest of this around and then I'll move on to the, the next step and show you some of the other stuff we're going to do throughout this body but yeah, as I said this this pen or pencil I should say makes it really nice you can just really not have to worry about messing stuff up too much 
Oh, the hard panel lines are laid in pretty good. Oh, the next step, using paintbrush. And I use this uh, Citadel Abaddon Black, but you can use any black you want that is compatible with the paint. I prefer acrylics personally. And we're gonna do what's called a dry brushing technique. I'll get that opened up. And actually I'm gonna dip my, got a, got a water pot here too. Dip that in there. And even though we're doing a dry brushing, uh, part of that is getting this brush loaded up with paint. And I found if I get the bristles wet first and then get them all dried out, it's actually a little bit easier to clean my brush afterwards and it actually makes it flow a little bit smoother. I'm going to back up a little bit more, I think, so you can see what's going on here. There, hopefully that's a little bit better. Well, get some black on the end. You can see where I've already, I've actually already been doing the other side. But I want to show you what I've been doing the whole time. And You just work this paint off your brush and you've got to decide how much paint you want loaded on there for how dark you want to go and a lot of it has to do with the amount of paint you leave on your brush and the amount of pressure you put on it with your hand so now that we are there I've already done our hard panel lines I like to come back over them with this little bit of dry brushing and with this technique you can kind of start laying in the, the dark shadowing a little bit better And we started to make our streaks coming down the doors. Make that really stand out here a lot better. And I use this on so many different builds I do. This is really one of the most used techniques I have. Because the, the lines it creates, the shadow and panel lines adding that little bit of extra shading to it hopefully it's transforming on camera as well as it is to my own eye being right here just this little bit of stuff and you can do this with multiple colors I'm probably gonna come back in with a brown afterwards and then we'll get to playing with uh, some of the rusting agents and when I'm doing this I like to leave the body on because it kind of helps hold it rigid a little bit more for me, especially if I'm doing it on camera. And depending on how dark you want these lines to go, it's how much you preload your brush and how hard you push. I'm wanting these panel lines down here a little bit more pronounced so I put a little bit more paint on my brush and then applied my pressure just a little bit different and now you see where it's starting to kind of push in those hard panel lines and so you have your hard panel lines in the middle giving you a really nice definition and then you have this coming around the outside just kind of adding a little bit of extra shading effect And I think it starts to just slowly bring your model to life. But I think you're really starting to, to get the idea. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and let you get a good look. Yeah, it's starting to really, really come in nice. But I'm going to move on to the next thing we're going to be doing. And with that, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of brown. And I'm going to bring a sponge into play as well and do like a, I like to call it a stomping technique with a little bit of brown. Kind of puts like almost like a little bit of mud splatter and whatnot around. And that will 
really help bring things out as well. I love doing these paint jobs because there's, there's really no wrong way to do it. You can just mess around. Even when you mess up, you didn't really mess up. You might actually have a happy accident and make something really cool you weren't even planning on doing. All right, I'm going to switch out to that stomp technique and show you that after I finish the rest of this section of the vehicle up off camera. Okay, on to the next step. So I use this little sponge that I've cut down and put on a stick. And then I've split the end in several places. And I use it for kind of doing like a, a stomping. Kind of makes it look like a mud, dirt, grime, whatever. And you can use just about any color paint combo you want. It's been a second since I've had this one off. That's a heck of a time to get open. Well, I like to get some paint on there and blot it off a bit because I don't want it to be too, too heavy when I'm getting on there. And then I can just kind of pick some places and stomp a little bit here and there. I like it really good for down around sections like this. You can get more off of it and then it down, stomp, twist, and get a lot of really, really nice designs with it. Well, honestly, I have a good time doing this, and I mean, it's pain if you mess up, so what? Paint it again. Sometimes it's a little time-consuming when that happens, but it's not the end of the world. Pretty much everything's repairable if you don't like it. Well, let's see. I'm going to take this brush I got here. Get some water on there, and it's... Let's pull that up a little bit. Uh, pull that down around a little bit. Nice thing about acrylics, you can manipulate them with water. So if you want to change your stuff around or even erase it, just get a little bit of water on your brush and you can thin out. Change your streaks. Pretty much just do any, any little combo you want to kind of build this stuff up and spread it about. Well, as you can see how that's turned out, I'm not going to go on with that too long because I know this video and I know how I am. I'll just keep right on rambling on, so we need to move on to the next steps. And the next step's pretty pretty simple stuff. Uh, it's just the metal effects rust. And that stuff works really good, really simple to apply, pretty much similar to what I'm doing right now, except it's just got that rust activator. So uh, yeah, you can you can see you can really just have fun with this and you're done. It's just <laughs> I just love the way that stuff turns out, guys. All right, on to the next step. So, on to the next step. As you can see, we got some new stuff out here. This is the Modern Masters Rust Effects, and I use this stuff a lot. And it's a three-piece system. You got your brown primer, which is about the same color as the, the shading we've been doing through there. And then you got your iron paint, which actually has iron oxide in the paint. So when you put this oxidizing iron, 
this is a, a corrosive. So when you put it on there, it actually causes it to have real rust, which is really neat. And it will continue to rust throughout its lifespan. I've done this to models three years ago, and they still have all the rust on them. I've never clear coated over them and they continue to rust further. So it's, it's really, really neat the way you can do some stuff with this rust effects. And we're just about ready to get going. You can you can see where we left off here. I hope it's looking as good through the camera as it is to the naked eye. But in order to get going, we're going to have to start off with our primer and put a little bit in there. I've already shook it up. And I have found it's best to have almost like a dabbing motion in the areas where you're going to want that to sit in. See, I like to do the creases. And I'll carry that up into here a little bit. That's going to be pretty good. And I definitely want to do a little bit around the bottoms of the doors. What you're wanting to do is kind of pick points where you know natural rust would be. And it helps it stick out a little bit better, too. We'll probably have a little bit up under here. All right. I'm going to finish doing that, and then we'll move on to the next step. After it dries, we'll use the iron paint. So I've finished laying out the sections that I wanted the primer on, and now we have our iron effect. Put just a, a little goes a long way on all these products except the corrosion act, the rust activator. And that stuff you kind of go through a lot of. And I'm really hoping that this is coming through good and looking good on the camera because I'm really happy with how it looks to my eyes. Now you can use a bunch of different styles blended together and come up with a really neat, unique paint job. One of a kind that only you have. And, you know, I really haven't found the perfect formula for the rust uh, application because sometimes it seems when I lay it on thinner in places, it rusts better. And then other times when I lay it on thick, it just it kind of depends on how the activator decides it wants to react that day, I guess. Well, you go through and put a put a generous coat on because I have noticed if you do go too, too thin, you'll get like breakthroughs and it's kind of weird looking. I'll usually go back and touch those areas up. And that's the nice thing. If you don't like how it turned out and it's not rusty enough for you, all you have to do is come back and add a little bit more iron paint. Hit that with that activator again. And I've tried other things as activators, and I wasn't wasn't happy with it. I've tried just water. I've tried salt and water, uh, just anything like that I could think of. And the only thing that seems to actually do a really good job is the the factory rust rust activator. So maybe you'll find something that works better. But it's not too bad if you buy it in the bulk bottles anyway. You can get this giant bottle. For, uh, I think, like $20 off of Amazon, something like that. But I will finish applying the, the iron paint. Just giving you an example of the how the stuff goes on in the different stages. So I'll finish applying that. And when that's good and dry, we'll spritz it with the oxidizer. And then we're going to have to let it set for 24 hours or so. Oh, the iron paint is set up and dried, and I've started distressing the wheels a little bit. Uh, I need to do more. I gotta get some more sandpaper and start going through there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
I'll take care of that off camera because I'm going to use the same basic principles I've used throughout the rest of the vehicle. But get them weathered down so they're not so shiny. Oh, we have our Metal Effects Rust Activator. Oh, all you have to do is just a little, little spritz in the affected areas. And you can repeat this process several times and just to make sure everything goes the way you want. And what I like to do is after I give it a, a spritz down, I'll go through and wipe off all the areas where I didn't want it to really set up that much. Just kind of tamp them off a little bit. That way makes it a little bit neater. And then I'm only see only leaving it in the in the areas where I want the rust to take effect. So I will see you in about 24 hours to see how this set up. And so there it is. Uh, this is after about 24 hours. And I went ahead and reapplied the rust effect, uh, corrosive stuff, about three more times since the first application. And I have went through and I dulled these wheels down a little bit, uh, sanded them, and then hit them with a little bit of dry brushing paint. And as I run them, they'll get worn in on their own even better. But this is what I do and how I do it. So I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. Maybe you can use some of these techniques in your own builds. At least maybe something out of there ought to be useful. But thanks for watching. Uh, smash that like if you enjoyed it. And if you're a new one, subscribe. I, I do stuff like this all the time. Always having fun with the RC stuff on YouTube. Have a great day, everybody. Catch you on the next one.